So number 1 says the square root of x plus 2 equals the square root of 5. When you are solving radical equations, in order to get rid of the radical sign, you have to square them. So we're going to square both sides. And squaring that would remove that radical sign. So we end up having x plus 2 on the left side, and we have 5 on the right side. And it becomes a simple one-step equation. And of course, we subtract 2 from both sides, so we end up having x equals 3. And so 3 would make that statement true up there. Okay. And number 2, we have the square root of x plus 5 equals the square root of x plus the square root of 5. So when is this statement true? Again, let's square both sides. And when we square both sides, we end up having x plus 5 on the left side. And the right side is a little bit, uh, it requires a little bit more work because we need to FOIL. So it's like if we have um, the square root of x plus 5 plus the square root of 5 and times the square root of x plus the square root of 5. So by FOILing, we multiply this two, so the square root of x times the square root of x, it's going to be the square root of x squared, so we end up having just x. So we multiply that, and we have this, and we multiply the square root of x and square root of 5. We have the square root of 5 and square root of x. We multiply this two, we have another square root of 5 and the square root of x. We multiply the two just like what we did here. They are the same. They are the same. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 will end up having the square root of. No, we end up having just 5. Okay? So 5. So that's what I'm going to put here. I'll have x. And take a look at this. There are two of them. So already um, I could combine them. They're like terms. Everything is the same. They're being added. So I'm going to have plus 2 square root of 5 square root of x. And of course, I have the plus 5. So take a look. I have x plus 5 equals x plus 2 square root of 5 square root of x plus 5. If I subtract the x from the left side and I subtract the 5 from the, the left side, they will cancel out. So this cancels out already. And all I have here is a 0. Equals. What's left behind is the 2 square root of 5 square root of x. If I want x to be by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 2 square root of 5. 2 square root of 5. So that I could cancel this out. And I end up having the square root of x is equal to 0. So take a look. The square root of x is equal to 0 means that if I square one way, is if I square again both sides, I'm going to just end up having x equals to 0. Or think about this. If I put in 0 there, what's the square root of 0? It's 0. So x is equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, it makes the original statement, the square root of x plus 5 equals the square root of x plus the square root of 5 true. So we're done with number two. And again, number three, we are again required to square them. Square both sides. So squaring both sides, we have the square root of x squared plus 4 squared equals x plus 4. What's going to remain here is simply x squared plus 4 squared. I'm just going to write 4 squared first. Equals. And here, it requires a little bit foiling. Remember what we did earlier? So this one here would be x plus 4 times x plus 4. So x times x is x squared. x times 4 is plus 4x. You multiply this. That's another 4x. They're both positive. And 4 times 4 is 16. And um, you have, this is going to turn into 8x. That's what I'm going to put here. x squared, 
plus 8x. And um, we have the 16 plus 16. And now, take a look at this. This is actually going to be 16 as well. So I should have already um, squared that. So I'm going to do that right now. So this is going to be 16, 4 squared 16. Look at how this is going to cancel out because if I subtract x squared from both sides, this is going to cancel. 16 and 16 is also going to cancel just because both of them are plus. And if I move one of them to one side, it's going to cancel out because this one's going to turn a minus 16. So I'm going to have here remaining just 8x. And of course, on that side, it's going to be 0. And if I divide both sides by 8, x is going to be 0. Of course, this cancels out. So again, number 3 is going to be true if x is equals to 0. Okay. Now, next problem. So, again, I'm going to square both sides. Square both sides. And this will become just x over 4 equals. That will become the square root of x. And you square that so you're going to have just x. And, um, by the way, I forgot. I forgot to square Oh, no, it's just going to be, wait, I forgot something. I forgot to write something. This should be the square root of 4. Okay, so if I square that, so the original problem is the square root of x over 4, and it's equal to the square root of x over the square root of 4. And now it's easy to see that since we just removed the radical sign, this will also be, x um x over 4 equals x over 4 now you would say then what's the value of x now this is an identity okay an identity means that whatever you put in whatever you put for the value of x it's gonna make that statement true over there the square root of x over 4 equals the square root of x over the square root of 4. Whatever value you put in for x, it's going to make that statement true because this is an identity equation. So don't forget that. When you end up having the left side equal to the right side, exactly the same, anything you put in there would make that statement true because it's an identity equation. I just repeated myself. That brings us to the last equation and so here we have 1 minus the square root of 6x times 1 plus the square root of 6x equals negative 35 so what do we do here i would just have to multiply them out so i'm gonna foil this side so 1 times 1 is going to be 1 1 times the square root of 6x is going to be plus the square root of 6x. A negative the square root of 6x times 1 is minus the square root of 6x. And take a look at this. They're exactly the same again, except that it's a minus here and it's a plus. So this is going to be a minus. And the square root of 6x times the square root of 6x, you know, is going to be the square root of 6x squared. So I can just write here 6x equals negative 35. I could cancel this out because this is a plus, this is a minus. They're the same terms except the sign, so they cancel out. And I end up having 1 minus 6x equals negative 35. I add 1 to both sides, or rather, I minus 1 from both sides because that is a plus. If I move it over the equality symbol, it becomes a minus 1. So I'm going to I'm gonna end up having negative 6x equals negative 36. And I divide both sides by negative 6. If I do that, 
if I do that, I'll end up having x equals positive 6. And x equals 6 will make my statement true. Okay, at this point, I am going to... So you have a full view of the whole sheet, if that's possible. I wonder, can I? Okay, let me see if I could pull that up. Okay, let's see. So all of the problems all in one place. Okay, here is an And here you go. And we can have a more detailed discussion when we see each other in class. And you could ask your questions about the solution. Okay. There you go. I'll see you in class.